Welcome to the Liberati Mansion. Welcome to Under the Vegas Sun, looking at the people, the events, and the news surrounding Las Vegas and the entire Vegas Valley. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. We are live from the Liberace Mansion. Success. What does it take to be successful in life? Sometimes it takes a lot more than we think. Sometimes it's as easy as believing in who you are as an individual. A very special guest in the program today is a gentleman who has been successful in many different ways, from hairstyling to what he does today, making other people successful. You'll get a chance to meet him in just a second. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Sometimes, no matter how you look at life, it's a series of different things. Sometimes it's a series of challenges and whether or not you make them victories. Becoming a traveler in this entire series of ups and downs can either make you or break you at some point. A very special guest on the program today is a gentleman who has not only gone through those challenges, but now helps others get through the challenges in a very unique way. His name, Peter Anthony Wynn. <laughs> Peter, welcome to our program. Thank you. Thank you for the kind introduction. It was fantastic. Well, it, it is, it's amazing to me how you have gone so much through in your life mm -hmm. to where you are today. And, and I think that story is very, very important to the audience. Sure. So you started when you were young. You were just 19 uh, years old. Yep, 19 and, years old. And you became enthralled with an amazing man uh, by the name of Tony Robbins. Yes, Tony Robbins. Really. And at the time, if I'm not mistaken, you were studying law. You were going to be a lawyer. I was... That was the plan, that was the intention, and that was the direction. Yeah, I was in pre-law at Stony Brook University. I had just finished taking my LSATs and um, was super excited, and I wound up at a Tony Robbins event, and it changed my, the trajectory of my life. But you ended up in a Tony Robbins event, not by walking into a Tony <laughs> Robbins <laughs> event. No, no, no. So let's be honest with the audience here. What you did is you, I convinced Tony Robbins that you should be there. It's, um, it's rather embarrassing, but I'll share the story. <laughs> so one of the things that was very cool was one of my friends was a, his father was a chiropractor and he was the president of the New York Chiropractic Association, vice president, I believe, actually, vice president at the time of New York Chiropractic Association, where Tony had done a lot of, uh, a lot of his initial work with chiropractors and dentists and alternative thinkers of the time and he s he handed me a, a set a box set of cassettes eight cassettes and the only place i had a cassette player was my camaro and he of course yeah of course right <laughs> so we i listened to all eight of the cassettes or maybe it was 16 eight and eight i think actually it was 16 but it took me about 10 or 12 hours sitting in the car sitting in the car and I didn't get out except to use the restroom and to grab some food out of my mother's kitchen. I was enthralled with the technology that he was sharing, the opportunity for a human being to change on their own volition, to change your destiny or change your stars based on the fact that you had a dream and there was a path to the success of that dream. I thought it was fascinating. And I'd grown up um, in a very humble environment and to say the least and i thought wow what if if tony could change maybe i could change and what would that look like and it turned out that tony was at a place called the waldorf astoria and he was presenting that weekend and i was a disc jockey in new york city and after i was done spinning records i drove to the waldorf and slept in a phone booth and i missed the first day of the seminar Slept in the phone booth. Now, they were very comfortable phone booths back, back then. then. <laughs> <laughs> they had, had little red seats. Velvet That's pillows. right. <laughs> it was fantastic. And I, I, got, I arrived at about 4 30, 5 o'clock in the morning, and everybody looked at me sort of funny because I, was, I had long hair and a, um, I was, you know, just very 
um, alternative looking, so to say. And uh, he just came in and it was like, hello, you know, <laughs> and I was like, I'm just going to use the phone and um, I'm here for the conference. And they knocked on the door at seven o'clock after I'd been in the phone booth a couple of hours. They figured out that I was um, not a guest of the hotel, but I convinced them that I Probably was Probably if you were sleeping in the phone booth, that was the first clue. Yeah. <laughs> I would think. This is crazy. <laughs> and then I convinced Tony to let me stay. Uh, um, he tried to kick me out three or four times. And I was like, no, you said if you were committed, you could do anything. If you're committed, you could do anything. That's what you said, Tony. And I was, I was very adamant. And he's like, you know, so he looks at his people and he's like, you know, get, get this guy out of here, <laughs> right? And I'm looking around the space and I said, this space is a mess. And I started helping clean up. And, I, and, and he's like, oh, well, you can stay, but it's $900. I'm like, I'm broke, but I'll be your best student. And I don't know that I was Tony's best student, but I was a very good student. And from there, you ended up traveling around the world with Tony Robbins. And, it, and there, was a, there was about a 14-year span between that moment and when I, uh, 12 years between that moment and when I started traveling with Tony as a platinum partner. When I look at it now and what you went through, the lessons that you learned Incredible. Then are the lessons that now you portray to others. Now, now, let's not go to there yet. You became probably one of the more famous hair salon uh, owners, mm -hmm. stylists in the world. Salon owners. The name Peter Anthony and in that business became synonymous with great success and style mm -hmm. and fashion. We were, we were very Long blessed. way from being a lawyer long way from you can imagine the phone call to my parents in Brooklyn you know hey mom and dad I'm dropping out of law school to be a hairdresser there were questions Italian family but there were questions <laughs> and uh, but you know what was interesting is the way it was presented to me was very unique the way it was presented was we have this core set of values personal values things that we that we love about ourselves and things that we are our non-negotiables in life. Creativity. The power and the passion inside. Yeah. The creativity was one of my non-negotiables, which law didn't present. Law presented a path to a certain type of creativity. So there were these core values that existed within us all, and I was able to articulate how I wanted to be creative versus just philosophical. And Tony cleared the dust and allowed me to see that in that way at that moment and commit to a better life. And it, and it was you discovering who you were. It was, yeah, it was complete, it was a journey and it actually that journey took 14 years until the moment we traveled together. It took about 14 years. During the path of that journey, I picked up other mentors that allowed me to be the number one in our industry um, for about four or five years as salon owners um, and allowed my team to be inspired and go on to win Emmy Awards and we were published thousands of times. Um, so it was, it was exciting. And in, in, in what you brought to the industry, let me, let, me, let me make it clear, what you brought to the industry had not been in the industry before. You had brought a certain amount of creativity that heretofore might have been maybe one or two people in the industry, but not to the level of the salons that you had. We brought, a, we brought which is interesting, which has led me to my second career, because everything is integrated. My, because of my background in law school, I liked systems. I liked rules. So we created rules around salon ownership that didn't exist at the time. And, we create, and those rules, because we were able to to compartmentalize them and um, repeat them and to create this structure and this beautiful syntax, we were able to do things financially that had never been done in a suburban setting. You know, maybe there were some very successful um, metropolitan salons right. in New York City or Paris or London, certainly Vidal and, and probably the bigger names were very good at that. But there was this transition in the 1980s from the idea of mom and pop to the idea of you could own 
and create your own personal brand and identity. And that's now really coming f full circle. But at the time, it was just something that no one had been doing. And we pioneered, we pioneered that, and we pioneered bringing culture into what had traditionally been a mom and pop operation. What is interesting to me, and fascinating to me, mm -hmm. is that this whole sense of what Peter Anthony was and what he created is now moved and shifted to what you call, you can change the you, world. You will change the world. Right. You will change the world in a way that I think that most people search for. I think most people don't really know really how to do it and how to find what you found as a 19-year-old. We're going to take a break for a couple seconds. When we come back, I want to talk to you about this whole sense that you have about having the power, having the passion, having the vision to be able to move people from what they think they should be to really what they want to be. Because I, I think that's it. what you do. I think so too. We'll take a break for a couple seconds. We'll be back with more with this amazing man. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Martin Ravenhill. I am the proprietor, owner of the Liberati Mansion, and I welcome you and invite you to explore all of the incredible features we have available at this historic house. Liberati lived here from 1974 until his death in 1987. Since then, I've been able to remodel and restore this house to its former glory. Here we have 15,000 square feet of amazing historic space available for weddings, ceremonies, corporate events and charity fundraisers. The Liberace Mansion. There is no place like it in the world. You will change the world. Simple phrase, simple meaning, but can it really be done? And can you do it? I guess that's the question. A very special guest for the program is a gentleman who not only believes that, who helps make it happen. A very special guest, Peter Anthony Wynn. Welcome back to our program. Thank you, I appreciate okay. it. You will change the world. Yeah, that sounds to me like such a simplistic phrase, but yet it is so... It's empowering. Empowering. Yeah, it's, it, it's epic. Okay, I, I look at myself, and, and, and I think that I'm a very much a similar example as most people. Uh, I am where I am at this age. I've had necessarily nine different careers. Of the nine different careers, wow. I've had 17 different jobs. Wow. And in, in, in that process, I kind of believe as though I found what this is. I found what it is 
that I can change my world. And I think once you find that, it is so empowering. It is, it is I get excited when I think about it because it is empowering. Yeah. Most people don't know how to get there. They, well, I think we all know how to get there as children. Very little small children. They, they we're born with this sense of curiosity and wonder and belief. And we're not taught what we can't do. We're only encouraged to do those things which we can't do at that moment. And um, it's interesting as we become older that we are taught to be skeptical or to be careful or to, be, um, to weigh out the pros and cons and to fit in versus to stand out. And uh, yeah, but, but it's inside you and you've done a great job of learning to use your assets to stand out, to enjoy your life. And but it wasn't, oh, okay, I, I had a, I came like me from a very, very poor family. We lived in a mm -hmm. one bedroom apartment. My sister, my You had an apartment? Well, <laughs> well it was called kidding. a flat. Um, <laughs> Cold water flat back then. Wow. And um, my dad was never thrilled with me and always told me as a child that I was a bum. I would be nothing but a bum the rest of my life. I'd always be a bum and, and just settle for it. And I became exactly what my dad said I was. By the time I was 17 years old, I had been in juvenile detention 14 times. I was exactly what he said I would be because I didn't know who I was. Right. Only what I was told I was. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the problem with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. We only believe in what we're told we are. Mm -hmm. we're, we're either um, successful because we're, we're talented in, in, in this or that, when really what we want is this over here. Sure. You know what's interesting? A very good friend of mine, his name is Les Brown, fantastic motivational speaker. And he tells a story, and within the story he shares um, that someone had an opinion of him and shared that opinion, and then Les told, repeated the opinion to his mentor at the time. And his mentor looked at him and said, never let someone's opinion of you become your reality. Everybody had an opinion of what we could or couldn't do. They said I couldn't, you know, I'd never attract celebrities to our salon we attracted celebrities. They said I would never win Salon of the Year. We won Salon of the Year. They said we would never be in the top 200 fastest growing salons. We did it four times. Um, it, it, it's not what you believe. It's what you believe that you act upon. And you have to put the action behind the belief a, until, until it's in every s cell that it becomes part of your physiology and your waking. And that's the gift that Tony shared with me, where Les shared with me the belief systems. Tony shared with me the mechanics but to put that into my physiology and to teach others. But that's what you become. You've, you've morphed <laughs> from the expert yeah. to the educator. Yeah. You have become this individual who now sees in other people the 19-year-old that you saw in yourself. And I see it in 60 and 70 and year old men and women who I mentor, some of the greatest names in, in, in industry who come to me and, and ask me to coach them and ask me to work with them because that belief system, you know, we get ingrained in it, whatever it is, but you need to hit it out of the park every time for yourself. You need to find that level of curiosity. You need to indulge yourself in those moments that you can recreate yourself. And there is, is I, I'm sorry, I get excited. <laughs> That's but good. There's, there's, I want you excited. There is nothing better than to watch somebody's eyes all of a sudden sparkle because they have seen that light. Sparkle because they now understand yeah. what makes them the person they are rather than this thing they've learned forever is who yeah. told them what they are. It's the, it's the igniting of their soul and their understanding of their potential that they have the power to change the world by capturing their own authentic message 
and sharing that message. That message has inspiration. That message has power. And within the power of their message, not only their world shifts, but the world around them shifts. The problem is, is we have become so easily convinced that we cannot be what we really want to be. I, 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 I like the Kardashian you. Kardashian effect. I, like, <laughs> like you, I, 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 I mentor people and talk to people and, yeah. and, and share with people. And the one thing I share with them is they cannot accept the F word. And it's not the F word everybody's going saying, oh, he's going to say the F word on TV. That's not the F word. It is F-A-I-L-U-R-E. Because once you accept that word in your brain, in your life, I believe that you can never get to where you really want to be. It's impossible. Failure doesn't exist. The opportunity exists. It's either going to happen to you or for you. One or the other. One or the other. And for those of us who understand that everything happens for us and creates lessons and examples for the people who allow their frustrations to be opportunities and their challenges to become victories before the solution. That's the person who wins the game. It's never quitting. You know, um, for the faith of a mustard seed is on the bottom of our website. We believe that the littlest, tiniest piece of faith that still exists within you will continue to inspire you to change. You can never quit because failure is, failure is only the conjecture and the lie that we tell ourselves. Exactly. It, it's, it is it's, exactly yeah. just that. It, it, is, it is the quickest way to escape from the challenge that you really don't want to face. Yeah. And when you face that challenge and you beat that challenge mm -hmm. and you make the challenge a victory, you stop becoming a victim. And I think that's the biggest thing. From victim people. to victor. Yep, exactly. That's the key. That is the key. And now, now your website, um, which is you will change uh, the world, the world dot com. Dot com. You talk right. You it talks about all those things and yeah. gives people the opportunity to see all of those things. Hundreds of mentors, thousands and thousands of lessons. What does it do for Peter Anthony, though? It's an interesting question. That, you know, I. You go from being this in front of the stage to being the coach of the people who are now on stage. And I love th my position of being the support system for people's stories because there's so many bigger stories than mine. There's so much more impact. And to dissipate and help that level of, like my friend Jay Shetty is looking to help the world um, recognize that wisdom should go viral. That's, and that's his posture, and we work with people like Jay or like Tony or like, you know, some just major people like Les Brown, and it's, it's amazing. It's like I wake up, I pinch myself, I'm like, oh my God, this is really happening. You know, did we just speak to that person? Is that person now allowing us to integrate? And a lot of the things that we do are for people's personal websites. I get to coach them and build their digital brands outside of the You Will Change the World platform. But the You Will Change the World platform is sharing mentorship. That's what changed you. That's what changed me. We found mentors. We became our own mentors. And it, sometimes it can be one person. It, in my life, it was one person who all of a sudden believed in me when yeah. nobody else would. Yeah. In my life, it was a book. It was a book. Tough times don't last. If you were to look into the eyes of the audience ah. and, and say to them one thing, what would it be? Besides never quitting, read. Read as much as you can about people who have accomplished things that have come from meager and humble beginnings and backgrounds. Just read and read and read through fiction, read novels, read biographies, but read and then find a mentor. It has been a wonderful time sitting with you. I will leave an open invitation to you any time to come in. Um, because I think your wisdom and your sharing is very, very important in today's life. So 
thank uh, you. Friend. I feel thank blessed. you very much for being with us. It's been oh man, it's thank been you. Delightful. It was an honor. It was an honor. And, and thanks for being in the Liberace Mansion. Oh my gosh, the Liberace Mansion. You've got to get here. <laughs> get to the Liberace. You, I see you sitting at home looking around. Get here. Thank you, my friend. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Frankie Shinta, downtown's king of entertainment. You're watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. You know, it's clear when, uh, when listening to Peter Anthony about his passion of life and his passion about having other people become successful in finding out who they are. You know, I, I know it's, it, it's, it's tough for all of us to be able to figure those things out, but, but it can and does make the difference. And as he says, you will change the world if you believe, if you truly believe in who you are. That's the key to life. And if we can all do it, we'll all be a better society overall. I'm Steve Shore. Until the next time, be safe and enjoy life under the Vegas sun. <laughs>